Amateur Basketball tipping off with women's opening round play, Algeria versus the People's Republic of China. Algeria were making their second appearance in the Paralympic Games, but still searching for their first win after losing all four of their contests in Rio. Meanwhile, the Chinese women making their fourth Paralympic Games appearance and looking to improve on their sixth place finish in Rio. Wheelchair basketball is one of the oldest and most popular sports at the Paralympic Games, first introduced at the 1960 Games in Rome. Algeria came out strong as team captain Jamila Kengani scored nine of the side's first 11 points, including one from long distance. That is a three-point shot from Algeria. Algeria's advantage didn't last long as China fought back to claim the lead. Baseline cut there by China. The basket is good. Great finish there by number 11, Argentina Dai. China then took control, scoring 31 of the next 41 points. China led 42-19 at halftime. China's impressive play continued in the third quarter as they outscored Algeria 24-2. Great ball movement, great cut down the middle and a wonderful finish there by number eight of China, Lin. Two more points on the fast break late in the game, so a good start for the Chinese women as they win in impressive fashion. Algeria 25, People's Republic of China 74. The opening round of women's wheelchair basketball in a highly anticipated meeting straight off. The reigning world champions, the Netherlands, taking on the defending Paralympic Games champions, the United States of America. The Netherlands are considered the gold medal favorites in Tokyo and are led by one of the sport's young rising stars in Bo Kramer. This shot by Kramer leveled the game at 18. She scored 12 points in the first half. The USA only have three players on their team that won gold in Rio, but one of them is Rose Hollerman, considered by many as the world's best female player. This three-pointer by her put the Americans on top. But it was her teammate, Lindsay Serbrog, who was the top scorer in the first half, scoring 18 points, USA up by two at halftime. Second half, Hollerman went to work. Swings it back to Hollerman. Hollerman from the right side, 45, sinks it in. First two points of the second half going to Rose Hollerman. Five seconds up on the shot clock. Hollerman behind the screen, puts the shot up, and it's in. But Netherlands would not give up. This fourth quarter basket by Kramer leveled the score at 52. Later, Kramer with another basket. Netherlands outscored the United States 18 to six down the final stretch. Kramer finished with 20 points to lead Netherlands to an exciting 68-58 win. Ja, dat is een gewoon, ja, het is gewoon een fantastisch team. Sterke tegenstander, schieten fantastisch, goede spelers. Ja, je moet je beste wedstrijd spelen. Wil je ja gelijk opgaan of winnen? The opening match of the men's gold year in Group A could hardly have been bigger, with defending Paralympic gold medalists Lithuania up against current world champions Brazil in the Makahari Mesa Hall. Once official eye shade checks had been completed, it was Brazil who threw the first ball of the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games as they began the battle of the world's two highest ranked teams. The first game of this men's gold ball competition, and it looks set to be a fantastic one. Brazil opened the scoring early on with Jose Marcio Sousa's goal. It's a goal from Sousa. But Lithuania soon equalised as the teams prepared for a <laughs> contest. Lithuania on level terms. The expected close battle didn't materialise in the first half though, as two converted penalties and some impressive throws helped Brazil to a comfortable lead. After the break, the penalties against Lithuania kept stacking up and Brazil took full advantage. And once again, Lithuania left to rue their discipline. Sosa, Marquez and Moreno were all on fine attacking form for Brazil. And with their defensive play every bit as strong, the lead was never threatened as the second half progressed. Here's Marquez with the throw. And Marquez makes it 11-2. And it's Brazil who are the victors here, 11-2. 
Brazil eventually ran out winners by a nine-goal margin, making a real statement of their intent to go for their first Paralympic gold at Tokyo 2020. For Lithuania, it was a tough opening to their title defence, but there's still a long way to go in men's goalball group A. The athletes from the Russian Paralympic Committee faced Canada in the opening round robin match of goalball's Group C. Both teams have high hopes for Tokyo 2020, as the RPC team come into their first Paralympic Games as the current world champions, and Canada, Paralympic gold medalists from Sydney in 2000 and Athens in 2004, have strengthened in recent years under the stewardship of their experienced captain, number three, Amy Burke. There was little needed in the way of a warm-up from the RPC, who got their Group C campaign underway in the perfect fashion, with a goal from Arina Gerasimova and a quick follow-up from teammate Alina Arestova to stun the Canadian team just moments into the match. 2-0 for the RPC, what a start for this RPC team. Arestova demonstrated her precise shooting skills again in the first half, breaking through the Canada defence on the stroke of half-time to open up a commanding 3-0 lead for the athletes from Russia. And in the second half, the RPC number seven would continue in the same vein as she led the attack and her teammates looked equally solid in defence. Anastasia Trudina added her first goal and her team's fifth late on to secure the win. Yet Canada showed great resolve to find the back of the net themselves through Emma Reinka's goal before the final buzzer sounded. Canada got one on the board at the end, but it's RPC who had the victory. The RPC team were left to celebrate their first ever Paralympic Games win. It finished 5-1 at the Makahari Mesa Hall against the team one place above them in the world rankings. For Canada, attacking improvements will be required if they're to make an impact in an evenly matched goal ball Group C. The opening match in the Tokyo 2020 wheelchair rugby competition saw the United States of America face New Zealand in the Group B pool phase. Consisting of four eight-minute periods, points are scored by carrying the ball over the goal line. It's a fast and physical sport, where contact between wheelchairs forms a major part of the action. After a traditional hacker from the New Zealand players before the start of the game, the USA quickly took control of the match. Charles Aoki, with his third try in his third problem of the game, saw his team lead 13-6 at the end of the first period. New Zealand struggled to keep pace with the scoring and broke through the USA backline. Their main scoring threat came from the power of Barney Konifaranisi. This was one of eight tries for him in the second period. The USA breached the Kiwis' defence time and again on the counter-attack as they stretched their lead to double figures as half-time approached. The USA were silver medalists in this event in Rio 2016 and their class was too much for a New Zealand side where every player was making their game's debut. Aoki added to his total and his team's lead again here after a great block from number 12, Chad Cohen. A comfortable win for the United States of America in their opening group game as they route 63-35 wins. A tougher test awaits for them next in Canada. Tokyo 2020 Paralympics Table Tennis Competition featured round one of the men's and women's singles group match. The women's class nine began with a contest between Alexa Svitak of Hungary and Brazil's Danieli Raon. Raon had come back from six points down to four levels. She then took the lead for the first time and earned game points. Oh, Raon's played that absolutely sensationally. Svitak won the second game to level the score and took a commanding lead in the third. And she has it, Alexa Sitach takes the game. Despite a second six-point comeback from Rowan, the Hungarian now two on up in this best of five match. This crucial point reflected the high-level reach by both players. And from here, Svitak went on to take the match through one. In women's class three, Sweden's Anna Karen Alkis had dominated the first game of her match with Moses Alkintas of Turkey. Then the 31-year-old Turk hit back to draw level with Alkis, the London gold medalist, and was clearly thrilled. 
Marquist, who also won bronze in Rio, then drew on her experience and seized the momentum to take the third game before securing the match by three games to one. The men's class nine started with the match of the opening round between Japan's Iwabuchi Toyo and Great Britain's Ashley Facey Thompson. With the scores locked at two games all, Facey Thompson pulled his way back from three match points down. Iwabuchi then earned his fourth match point. And what a match it was. In men's class eight, double Paralympic champion Zhao Shai from People's Republic of China faced Hungary's Kyula Zabora. Zhao, who had won gold in Rio and London, showed exactly why he was expected to put up a strong defense of his title as he won the first game 11 7. The 15 year old whose best Paralympic result was fourth in Athens, did not have the answers to Zhao's offense, and the result was never in doubt. A strong start from the champion as he won the games below. The table tennis tournament at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games continued with popular Egyptian Ibrahim Hamad II making his first appearance. The 48-year-old made his Paralympic debut at Rio 2016 and caught the eye with his unique serve and style of play. In the Class 6 singles, Hamad II had a tough start, losing in straight games to the Republic of Korea's Park Hong Q. Amadou takes a moment to give thanks. Uh, as always, has enthralled us here with his skill. The 48-year-old left-hander finished sixth at Rio 2016 and came through a tense third game 11-9 to complete his victory. Germany's Valentin Bauss is also off to a winning start in Class 5. The silver medalist in Rio beat the Paralympic debutant, a man Kamal Zanati, in straight games. It took just 16 minutes for the German to win his opening round-robin match, wrapping up the final game 11-1. In the women's draw, a number of defending Paralympic champions made their first appearances at Tokyo 2020. The People's Republic of China's Mao Jing Dian is hoping for a third consecutive gold medal following Class 2 victories at Rio 2016 and London 2012. Her opponent, Japan's Tomono Yuri, played her part in a hard-fought contest, but surrendered a seven-point lead in the third game, failing to convert on four match points before the Chinese player completed her victory. And that'll do it. From 9-2 down in that third game, she comes back to take it. It's a straight games win for Mao Jingdian, the defending champion over Tomono Yuri here. In Class 4, defending Paralympic champion Borislava Peric Rankovic came up against Great Britain's Susan Bailey, who is appearing in her fifth Paralympic Games. Peric Rankovic finally won gold in Rio, having claimed three Paralympic silver medals and the Serbian dominated, losing just eight points on her serve as she completed a straight games victory. Yeah! Oh! The Netherlands' Kelly Van Zon also got her Paralympics underway against Mexico's Claudia Perez Villalba. The 33-year-old is hoping for her third consecutive Paralympic gold in Class 7 and made a winning start in straight games. And in class 11 for intellectual impairment, the Rio 2016 gold medalist Natalia Cosmina faced Japan's Furukawa Konami, who is making her Paralympic debut. The 24-year-old has a signature crouching serve, which is modelled on dance moves. The Ukrainian favourite Cosmina got off to a slow start and Furukawa took full advantage. And that will do it. That is a huge win for Furukawa Konami over the gold medalist from Rio 2016 in this class 11. Furukawa's three games to one victory over the Ukrainian favorite underlined her medal credentials and her 10 hour training days are clearly paying early dividends. As the first swimming heat got underway at the Tokyo Aquatic Centre, it was a momentous occasion for Australia's Ellie Cole. 
In her very last event before retirement, the six-time gold medalist was looking to reach the final of the women's 400-meter freestyle S9. She started this second heat in the yellow lane five alongside her compatriot Lakeisha Patterson, who has dominated this event in recent times. Despite a slow entry into the pool, Cole soon powered ahead. The fastest eight swimmers from the heats qualify for the final, but Cole looked determined to make a statement and finish well ahead. Ellie Cole also, she previously trained this event, but she's recently been focused more on the sprint events. So I'm actually a bit surprised to see her go out so fast here. The two Australians dominated the race. Cole comfortably finished first, Patterson second, a full five seconds ahead of Chu Jie Lang of the People's Republic of China, who celebrated her 19th birthday by booking her place in the final. There was a surprise in the men's 100-meter butterfly S14, a brand new race for this classification. Japan's Tokairin Dai was one of the medal favorites and made his Paralympic debut in lane four. The top three ended less than a tenth of a second apart, with Australians Liam Schluter finishing first, but it wasn't a quick time. They'd all face a nervous wait to see if they'd qualify for the final. Trying to deny them in heat three was world champion and world record holder Rhys Dunn of Great Britain, leading in the red cap here. Rhys Dunn, for sure, wants to be in the middle of the pool in lane four heading into tonight. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The man from uh, Plymouth in England touches quickest, fast, uh, quickest and now under 56 seconds. Uh, the world record holder now has the Paralympic record as well, 55.99. He and the rest of the top four finished with very fast times, meaning neither of the expected medal contenders in heat one, Takairin and Schluter, qualified for the final. Schluter missing out by an agonizing 0.01 seconds. Another swimming legend retiring at the end of these games is Brazil's most decorated Paralympian, Daniel de Fahia Gias. The 24-time medalist began his Tokyo 2020 campaign in the men's 200-meter freestyle S5, the defending champion was in lane five, trying to chase down Spain's Anthony Ponce Bertrand in the yellow lane four alongside him, who dominated as he began his final 50 meters. And here for Ponce, he is doing just that. He looks very steady coming into his final 50 right here. He doesn't look like he's tired at all, just cruise control. And he ended the heat 11 seconds ahead of GS, qualifying for the final as the fastest swimmer overall and staking his claim for her first Paralympic gold medal. The clear favorite to win the women's 100 meters backstroke S2 was Yip Pin Shu. The Singaporean swimmer was aiming to retain her Paralympic crown from Rio 2016. Yip Pin Xu in lane four was easily the fastest qualifier in an experienced field. The notable exception was Yamada Mayuki from Japan, just 14 years of age. Yamada in lane three made an impressive start, but was always chasing Yip. She's hanging in there with you. She I mean, she, she looks really good right now. There, there's really no one else after the second place position that's close to these two. Now you see Yip starting to pull away and extend her lead. She's relying on her arms entirely. You can also see that even though she doesn't really have control over her hands, she is able to pull water and control her stroke underneath. With these swimmers, you generate speed, it's underwater. So you want a fast turnover. And if possible, you don't want to just be, you know, your arm shouldn't just be there for the ride. And certainly not just there for the ride. She's got to come to the wall. It's outside of her own world record time. But yet again, she is a gold medalist in a major international tournament. She is a champion once more at the Paralympic Games. And Yamada does claim Japan's first medal in the pool. And I can tell you that all the Japanese technical officials around us here are on their feet and applauding. Who's going to claim bronze, though? It is Ramirez, remarkably. A proud moment for Yip, the Paralympic champion once again. Like, like it, it feels like it's been a rough year, but after, after all of this, it's like, it's just finally some light to the end of it, yeah.
The final of the men's 100 metres butterfly S14 produced a surprise winner. Watch out for Gabriel Bandera from Brazil in the blue hat in lane five. Alongside him in lane four was Rhys Dunn from Great Britain. Rhys in the red cap was the world record holder, a reputation that counted for little here. But it looks to be Bandero is going to cause an upset and a shock victory here in Paralympic record time. This is the first real upset of the Paralympic Games. What a performance from Gabriel Bandera, who has managed to beat the reigning world champion, the world record holder, and suddenly, oh yes, give me some glory. Show me some love. Look at the celebration. This is a genuine upset win. This is not just for me, but for my whole family and for my friends who are with me. And lots of words. I'm very happy. I can't speak. With world record holder Valeria Shabalina in the field, it was always going to be difficult to stop the Russian Paralympic Committee athlete from claiming the gold medal in the women's 100 meters butterfly S14. Shabalina in lane four in the white cap soon made her move. She's uh, gone from half a body length down to half a body length in front, approaching the wall at 50. And you can see Shabalina, she not only breathes to her front, but she also breathes to her side. This allows her to get a peek at whoever else is in the heat and to look at her position. So, you know, she knows if she needs to speed up or, or what. For this second 50, she's gonna try and build it. She's taken the lead, and now all she needs to do is to hang on against any last minute surges from the other folks who are coming down the way. But she looks very good right now. Well, uh, Shabalina, there was uh, talk that her plans for gold might have been upset here. Paige Leonhardt, who swung the fastest time in the world this year just two months ago and was looking to upset the apple cart, so to speak, but it is going to be Shabalina, and she's going to do it and crush her own world record in the process. Shabalina swims sub-104, 103.59, the first swimmer to go sub-104. Leonhardt with a sensational silver medal. A golden performance from Shabalina, one of the stars of the pool at Tokyo 2020. टोक्यो मेट्रोपॉलिटन जिम्नेजियम में टेबल टेनिस स्पर्धा का पहला मुकाबला जहां पर भारत की सोनल पटेल सामने हैं चीन की ली जियान के इस मैच के रेफरी हैं जापान के फुकोदा टोमाटो आज पहला दिन है टेबल टेनिस का और पहली सर्व सोनल पटेल की तरफ से पहला अंक भी मिला सोनल पटेल को ग्रुप डी का यह मुकाबला है क्लास थ्री का और अगर क्लास थ्री की बात की जाए तो इस कैटेगरी में प्लेयर्स के ट्रंक पे कोई कंट्रोल नहीं होता बट येट देर आर्म्स आर मिनिमली इफेक्टेड बाय द एम्प्लॉयमेंट एक शून्य का स्कोर बराबरी पर बैकहैंड से प्रयास था सोनल का दो एक एक बार फिर बराबरी गलती की ली चैन ने अच्छा प्रयास और कामयाबी क्लोज एनकाउंटर कहेंगे इसे छे छे की बराबरी एक पॉइंट और सेवन सिक्स भारत के पक्ष में
बेहतरीन स्मैच था लेकिन करारा जवाब थोड़ा सा चूकी यहां पर सोनल पटेल गेम पॉइंट है ये तो वापसी की पूरी कोशिश कर रही हैं चाइनीज खिलाड़ी ये क्रूशल पॉइंट हो सकता है गलती की और पहला गेम सोनल पटेल ने जीत लिया है 11 नौ के स्कोर से एक बार फिर बराबरी पर फाइव बॉल का स्कोर एक और गलती और एक पॉइंट भारत के लिए सिक्स फाइव कोशिश अच्छी थी सिक्स ऑल ओ बराबरी पर लेके आई इस तीसरे गेम में चाइना के खिलाड़ी ली जैन एक बार फिर सोनल के लिए एडवांटेज 11-10 का स्कोर एक एक की बराबरी है अभी तक इस मुकाबले में ओ 11 ऑल गलती की और एडवांटेज मिला भारत को 12-11 बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट गेम है ये अग्रेशन दोनों प्लेयर्स के अंदर है और एक एक पॉइंट के लिए पूरा प्रयास किया जा रहा है अच्छी थी 13-12 भारत आगे इस तीसरे गेम में और एक बार फिर इससे क्लोज इनकाउंटर क्या होगा फोर्टीन थर्टीन पे लगी बॉल डायरेक्शन बिल्कुल सही थी फिफ्टीन फोर्टीन क्या ये आखिरी अंक होगा इस गेम का आसानी से हार मानने वाली नहीं है लीशन सिक्सटीन फिफ्टीन एक बार फिर भारत यहां पर संघर्ष करता हुआ लेकिन आगे है इस मुकाबले में 16-15 के स्कोर से दोनों ही प्लेयर्स का संघर्ष जारी ये आखिरी पॉइंट था इस गेम का दो एक की भड़क ले ली है भारत ने 17-15 से इस गेम को जीता और दो एक से आगे है भारत ये डिसाइडर पांचवा गेम 6-3 
थोड़ा सा चूंकि अग्रेशन दिखाया था दोनों तरफ से स्मैश हुए थे पॉइंट मिला चाइना को सेवन थ्री का स्कोर बैकहैंड पे थोड़ा कंट्रोल करना पड़ेगा सेवन थ्री और गलती एडवांटेज मिला चाइना को एट थ्री प्रयास अभी जारी है यहां से भी वापसी हो सकती है नाइन थ्री चाइना आगे इस मुकाबले में ये पांचवा गेम है और कोशिश वापसी का ऐलान चार नौ का स्कोर फोर नाइन रीच से थोड़ी दूर थी बॉल टेन फोर कोशिश अच्छी थी लेकिन 11-4 के स्कोर से इस मुकाबले कोशिश अच्छी थी लेकिन 11-4 के स्कोर से इस गेम को जीता और इस मुकाबले को 3-2 के स्कोर से अपने नाम किया चीन की खिलाड़ी ने अच्छी कोशिश अच्छा प्रयास एक टफ एनकाउंटर था चाइना जो कि टेबल टेनिस में एक सुपर पार माना जाता है उनके विरुद्ध टोक्यो मेट्रोपॉलिटन जिम्नेजियम में आज टेबल टेनिस में भारत का दूसरा मुकाबला एक बार फिर भारत और चाइना आमने सामने हैं जिंग जोंग चाइना की और भारत की भविना पटेल इस मैच के अंपायर्स हैं फ्रांस और जापान से फेडरिक फेडरिक फोकार्ड और टोमोटो फोकुडा आज का ये दूसरा मुकाबला है टेबल टेनिस में और पहली सर्व करेंगी भवीना पटेल भारत की पहला पॉइंट मिला भारत को एक शून्य वन ऑल गलती चाइना की और एडवांटेज भारत के लिए एट थ्री अनपोज एरर Nine three. प्रयास अच्छा था लेकिन सफलता नहीं मिल पाई टेन थ्री अच्छा प्रयास आसान जीत चाइना के लिए इलेवन थ्री से इस पहले गेम को अपने नाम किया दूसरे गेम की शुरुआत पहले गेम में एक तरफी जीत दर्ज की थी चाइना ने और शुरुआत में पहला अंक मिलता हुआ चाइना को एक बार फिर 
गलती और फायदा भारत के लिए वन ऑल शॉप प्लेसमेंट फाइव सिक्स ये अंक मिला चाइना को अपने अंतर को कम किया अच्छा प्लेसमेंट एट नाइन वापसी की कोशिश भारत के द्वारा नाइन ऑल भवीना पटेल दूसरा गेम है ये ये गलती महंगी पड़ सकती है टेन नाइन नेट पे लगी बॉल और दूसरे गेम को चाइना ने जीत लिया है 11-9 के स्कोर से दो शून्य से आगे है अब चाइना इस मुकाबले में तीसरा गेम और चार एक का स्कोर भारत की सर्व एक चार अच्छा प्लेसमेंट इस बार अंतर कम किया दो चार गलती और एडवांटेज चाइना के लिए फाइव टू तेज तराश मैच था सिक्स टू सेवन टू गलतियां जितनी कम करेंगे उतना फायदा आपके लिए रहेगा एक और गलती और चाइना के पास अब छ पॉइंट्स का एडवांटेज हो गया है इस तीसरे गेम में अच्छा प्लेसमेंट एक पॉइंट और नाइन टू का लाजवाब प्रयोग 10-2 का स्कोर गलती की और नुकसान भी हुआ 11-2 का स्कोर रहा चाइना ने इस गेम को जीता और इस मुकाबले को जीत लिया है तीन शून्य के स्कोर से एक तरफा किया इस मुकाबले को और यह रहा आज का स्कोर इस मुकाबले का तीनों गेम्स चाइना ने अपने नाम किए चाइना के साथ तो बहुत खुश हूं कि मैं इतनी फाइट दी मैंने मैं परफॉर्मेंस से बहुत खुश हूं पहले तो ये मेरा ओलंपिक फर्स्ट टाइम है मैं ओलंपिक में पैरा ओलंपिक में फर्स्ट टाइम आई हूँ और ये मैं पैरा ओलंपिक में सिलेक्शन होना वही बहुत बड़ी बात है मेरे लिए और मैं यहाँ तक आने के लिए आ, दिन में सेवन या एट आवर्स में प्रैक्टिस करती हूँ और फिजियोथेरापीस डाइटिशियन वो भी वो मैं बहुत ध्यान रखती हूँ और वीडियो वीडियो एनालिसिस करती हूँ मेरे साथ सभी प्लेयर का कोरिया है चाइना है उनका वीडियो एनालिसिस करती हूँ और मेरे कोच है मिस्टर लालन दोषी 
वो मुझे बहुत सपोर्ट करते हैं कोचिंग अच्छी देते हैं मुझे यहाँ आने दे के लिए साई है टॉप से और मैं पीसीआई पीसीआई को मैं बहुत थैंक्स कहती हूँ और टॉप में आने से हमें वैसे तो प्लेयर को बहुत प्रॉब्लम होती है यहाँ तक आने के लिए और साई ने जो टॉप्स की सुविधा देके हमें प्लेयर को बहुत ही सपोर्ट किया है और हमें प्लेयर को बहुत मोटिवेशन ऐसे मिलता है ये बहुत खुशी की बात है कि देश का प्रधानमंत्री पैरा एथलीट को मोटिवेट करते हैं तो बहुत अच्छा लगता है और प्लेयर पे पैरा प्लेयर को थोड़ी एनर्जी आ जाती है कि देश का प्रधानमंत्री उसको मोटिवेट करता है तो बहुत ही हम खुशी होती है अंदर से ओलंपिक्स पैरालंपिक्स में आने के लिए मैंने मतलब बहुत मेहनत की है पूरे ये दिन मतलब आठ घंटा मैं डेली प्रैक्टिस करती थी और ये मेरा फर्स्ट पैरालंपिक है और यही मेरी शुरुआत हो रही है अभी क्योंकि मुझे अभी बहुत आगे जाना है स्पोर्ट्स अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया पैरालंपिक कमेटी ऑफ इंडिया टॉप्स में टॉप्स ने भी उन सब ने हमें बहुत सपोर्ट किया है इससे बूस्टिंग हो जाता है जब हमारे पीएम खुद मतलब हम लोगों को ऐसे लाइव देख रहे हैं और हमारे लिए तालियां बजा रहे हैं तो एक प्राउड मोमेंट रहता है और अंदर से एक उस बम हो जाते हैं कि नहीं हमें अपना करके दिखाना है हमारे देश के लिए कुछ करना है देखिए टी में पहली बार डेब्यू हो रहा है पैरालंपिक्स में और दो सिवियर डिसेबिलिटी की हमारी एथलीट्स सोनर और भवीना उतरी हैं मैं ऐसा नहीं कहूँगी कि आज कोई हार मिली है क्योंकि सोनल के अगेंस्ट ली चियान जो चाइनीज़ प्लेयर हैं वो तीन चार पैरालंपिक्स ऑलरेडी खेल चुकी हैं ढेरों मेडल जीत चुकी हैं उन्हें पैरालंपिक्स के मंच का बहुत एक्सपीरियंस है और जो ऑलरेडी मेडलिस्ट है वो इतनी स्ट्रॉन्ग कंटेंडर लेकिन सोनल ने उनको ज़बरदस्त फाइट दी Uh, दो दो के ड्रॉ में मतलब पांच गेम सेट्स खेलने पड़े ऐसा नहीं था कि वो क्लीन स्वीप कर पाई उनके काफ़ी मैंने उनके भाव भी देखे चाइनीज़ भी हिल गए थे क्योंकि uh, दो मैच उन्होंने जीते दो सोनल ने जीते और फिर फाइनली बहुत कम अंकों से सोनल का मैच छूटा तो मुझे लगता है ये अपने आप में एक जीत है क्योंकि uh, उसको इससे बहुत कॉन्फिडेंस मिलेगा कि जब एक ड्रॉ तक वो ला सकती है एक ऐसे खिलाड़ी को जो ऑलरेडी पैरालंपिक्स में कई बार पदक जीत चुकी है तो मेरे हिसाब से ये एक स्टेप फॉरवर्ड है और भवीना की तबीयत थोड़ी नासाज रही वो आते ही वायरल का शिकार हुई तो आज उनका फॉर्म इतना अच्छा नहीं था लेकिन वो खुद अपने लिए एक कोटा लेकर आई हैं वो अपने आप में दर्शाता है कि वो बेहतरीन अंतर्राष्ट्रीय खिलाड़ी हैं और आगे बेहतर करेंगी